Xavier so base was just given a score of 8.2 by Pitchfork. That's higher than Lil Uzi Vert's Pink Tape, which had 5.7. Travis Scott's Utopia also got 5.7. Man, they just love that number, 5.7. Drake's recent album, 6.5. Yeet's Life, 7.0. Playboy Cardi's self-titled, 7.3. Kanye West's 808 and Heartbreak, 808's and Heartbreak, 7.6. And A Great Chaos by Ken Carson's, 7.8. And Kanye West's The College Dropout, 8.2. Or sorry, they ranked it the same as Kanye West's The College Dropout. And I'm not gonna lie, like, I like Xavier So bass music. I think it's cool, but I'm not gonna lie, I think this entire underground scene might is about to get, like, cooked, or it might already be cooked, because the amount of people that are hopping on this whole Xavier So bass that spend trend is crazy. Like, there's no way they ranked Xavier's tape higher than all of those. And I liked Xavier's tape. Like, Xavier's tape has some good music on it, but it actually reminds me of this one uh, post I remember by Hyperpop Daily. I know a lot of people don't like him, but he had a really good point this one time. He was like, a rs in New York love, like, Reddit rap music, or like, all like the music credits and stuff, they like Reddit music. And Reddit music, it's just like, back then he was talking about Babytron, and he was like, yeah, this is what the kids like to listen to now and they don't really like understand the music they're just like oh this is what the kids are listening to this is cool we gotta listen to this we gotta pretend like we like this and right now they're doing that with xavier so based net spend v's all like these twitter rappers and stuff probably even like osama's son you know people like that they're trying to like use those guys and put them as like the new uh ins for music or like oh this is what all the kids are listening to it's just like really cringe and i'm not gonna lie like this type of stuff doesn't even do like anyone justice because even like people from my generation are like yo that's crazy you know what i mean the funny thing about pitchfork 2 is like they do have really stupid um ratings sometimes and a lot of people don't know this but the person who writes the album review or writes the review they don't actually get to decide the score someone from pitchfork is allowed to like change the score or add their own score so i just thought that was funny but anyways there is this new york times podcast or something and they were talking about net spend and xavier so based and i just want to go over it because it was giving me like secondhand embarrassment the way they were speaking about them so let's get into it so he starts introducing net spend and he puts net spend in with jades for some reason and he calls jades jadis this is what he says ben jadis Xavier so bass, like that whole scene. Uh, I was joking about the the Yapo riots. Uh, Noisy underground rap. Just chaos. A lot of chaos. SoundCloud uh, 11.0. Yeah. There's a new... Yeah, really corny. SoundCloud 11.0. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. And this is what they say afterward? Song. It's called 40. It's it's with Xavier so bass and Netspend with Evil Gianni. Uh, it's one minute and... I don't know, two seconds long? So it's their stairway to heaven. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's quite It's like long. a rush album, <laughs> yeah. comparatively. Um, uh, what, at a certain point, there's no adjectives. It's just legitimately very good. It encapsulates what makes these folks interesting. It's quick. It's there. It's evanescent. It goes away. Uh, I think we should listen. It's quick. It's evanescent. It's bro. Stop. Jeez, man. Oh my God. No way. Like he says, there's no adjective to describe the song. You can just say it's hard, man. It's not that crazy. The other thing is like, these guys clearly don't listen to Xavier So Based or Netspend because no one would ever say, oh, this is what encapsulates Netspend and Xavier So Based. It's a very good song. I admit it. Uh, it's a good song, right? It's like a hard drill song. Like I like the song, you know, but N neither of them are drill rappers. Xavier So Based and Netspend, they both make like, a lot of jerk. They make like other underground genres kind of you get what i'm saying like this is like it was like a first for both of them xavier might have some drill stuff from before but like netspend doesn't they just hopped on it because it was like an evil gianni sample drill beat and like they mess with surf gang that type of stuff and they're cool with it but these guys they're like 40 years old so they don't actually know any of this stuff so they're just like man dude this song 40 oh man oh man it's like their best work like clearly these guys do not listen to either of them you know what i mean so yeah just super corny Okay, and this is how you know these guys are really, really, really out of touch and should not be speaking on this. Like, this is worse than... I've never seen something this bad, this, like, cringe, bro. They bring up Matt Ox, all right? And actually, I'm gonna just play it for you. And side by side with that, I did want to point to some recent Matt Ox material. Matt Ox, maybe Matt Ox is the godfather of this post, post, post rage. Uh... There was a interview with Maddox recently, and he was asked who he likes in the underground, and he said Netspend is, quote, my twin. Shout out, shout out my little bro, Netspend. That's my twin. So uh, have you seen? He, but he meant my twin like I had twins. <laughs> and one of them my was Netspend. <laughs> my actual um, child. 
Did you have? Did you listen to the Matt Ox album that came out a few months ago? No, I just saw the. Bro, they call Matt Ox Netspen and Xavier So Bass's father or something like. And then the way they talk about him calling Netspen his twin, like everyone knows, like at least my generation, even like people in their twenties, they know twin just means like, oh, you're close with someone, you're cool with that dude, like, that's my twin, like close friend, good friend, just someone you're friends with, you're just cool with them, right? That's my twin. The way this guy's like, yeah, he means twin, like twin, like it's his actual twin brother, like he birthed Netspen, like dude. Matt Ox and Netspen, like, okay, I get they're both white kids and stuff, but they're not really that similar. You can tell Netspen is not inspired by Matt Ox. Like, he's cool, and I'm sure, like, he pays homage and stuff, but come on, man. And then he says, like, did Matt Ox birth this new... Dude, how out of touch do you have to be to think Matt Ox birthed this underground way? Like, yo, you gotta be on some other... Yeah, these dudes were just on some other thing, but... But I think we made enough fun of these music critics that don't really know what they're talking about. Let's get back to um, what I was saying. So as you can see from these these dudes, Netspend, Xavier Sobase, I think Yapo JJ too, and like a couple of other people, maybe Osama Sun, just whoever's kind of mainstream, like they all are getting, I won't say gentrified because it's already white kids that listen to all their stuff. But I mean, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like when cool art people try to take something as theirs or like, I don't know how to explain it. Like these guys, the music critics and stuff, it's just like annoying and weird to me how people who don't even listen to artists will just start like you LARPing or just like yapping, pretending like they... It's so it's so weird like damn like that clip of those two white guys was kind of appalling you know I then saw some of the comments and it says how does this podcast have 1.6 out of 5 stars on Spotify I totally understand why this podcast has 1.6 out of 5 stars on Spotify like these dudes do not know what they're talking about it's just weird they also called it like post rage like the way they were describing the music was like oh my god dude you guys are way too old for this like these guys were probably listening to tupac and biggie when they were little or they might be they were probably in their 20s or something when that was going crazy i can't imagine i feel like there's an age you got to tap out of i know i talked about in my your age your rage video like i do think it's cool they're trying to like tap in i'm not trying to be super mean or anything it's just like cringe to me weird like yo i'm not saying they can't enjoy the music it's just that whenever people in like I wouldn't say the industry because they're not really like music industry people or people start saying yo this is the next big thing this is what all the kids like it's just clear they don't actually care about the music just weird I don't really like that you know what I mean I think a lot of you guys will agree with that too now let's go back to this um pitchfork review the people they ranked him higher than some of it is kind of crazy like utopia utopia is a tape is an album that was being worked on for like six years damn near and I'm not saying that time makes it that great or like 808s and Heartbreak has stood the test of time for like 15 years, bro. Like, I, I know that it wasn't rated 15 years after. It's not all on like historic, not on a historic basis. So it's on like a first week basis. But no way someone from Pitchfork heard this and was like, man, this is better than Kanye, Ken Carson, Playboy Cardi, Lil Uzi, Travis Scott, Drake, Yeet. Like, there's no way. I don't know how Yeet got a lower score than Xavier so based. I think this is Pitchfork just trying to be like, we we know what's cool. Look, guys, you don't, you know, we know what's up. We're hip. This isn't like, we're not on some old, we're not old heads. Like, we know what the kids like. You know what I mean? I think this is just them trying too hard, you know? Like, if you go in the comment sections for some of these uh, posts where they talk about how Pitchfork rated this album so high, even their own fans are like, yo, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, this is crazy. Because I feel like everyone has respect for Kanye and like all these big artists. Just like, yo, what did what did Xavier So Bass do to this Pitchfork reviewer? Like, I have no idea. I agree with some of the ratings though, like the Lil Uzi's thing, but you know, I'm just kind of curious, like what about the album? Because the album has cool songs on it, you know? like. What about it made it such a high rating or how did it get so critically acclaimed? So random, dude. What's also ironic is that when Xavier So Bass first started blowing up, he was getting hated on like crazy and that's kind of what made him blow up. Same thing with Netspin and all these people. And now like all the critics are like, yeah, damn, man, this is what the kids are listening to. We got to tap in. This is the future, man. This is the future. Post rage rage. Jeez, I cannot believe he said that. Evanescent. There isn't even an adjective to describe this type of music. Yes, there is, bro. There are tons of adjectives. I mean, goddamn. Anyways, that's just my two cents. I think it's really corny and cringe how they're like just LARPing. You know what I mean? But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you had a good day today. I stream every Friday at 2 p.m. East Pacific time. I plan on doing that for at least a couple of years. So let's see how that goes. Catch me there if you want to see me live. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow. Bye.